All right, so we're group four. I've got Christian Clanton, M. Delarm, Ryan Challoner, John Hodson, and Amit is probably enjoying a beach somewhere here in Southern California. We decided to keep with the great tradition of astronomers that came up with acronyms such as the VLA and the TMT, and that our group name is just Carriage, the first letter of each of our first names. <laughs> So, our project was going to be on gas accretion. We're supposed to look at how this affects planetary formation and eventually migration. None of us have any experience with disk, so what we decided to kind of do is actually explore the different properties involved in a disk and how that affects the formation of migration. So, Ryan will be taking you through that in just a second. Um, one thing that we did discover is how mass does significantly or sorry, how mass accretion does significantly, or gas accretion does significantly affect how planets are formed. And we were able to show, which we'll, you'll see with our last slide, how a planetary desert is actually formed if gas accretion is too high, and how that can be affected by the time scale of the disk. All right, so I will pass this over. Okay. And how do I make these go? We got some animations here. Okay. Okay. So, in the top left, or, uh, we have a couple of uh, viscosity plots here. So what we're doing is varying. Is it going? Ah, is uh, we're varying the viscosity with uh, from one e minus four, I think, or one e minus three. It's very quick, on, and then, so first you notice that this doesn't actually make a huge difference. There's slightly different migration based on viscosity, but as far as the uh, gas envelope or the gas accretion goes, there's not a lot changing. And then if you go on the right here, we've got the same uh, viscosity variation, but this is a plot of mass of the planet versus time. And you can see a little bit of variation in gas accretion, and if you look really closely, there's some a little bit of variation in the uh, core accretion, but, oh no, not a lot there. So viscosity didn't have a huge impact. And next we uh, thought we would mess with the uh, temperature profile. So we're varying here the exponent on the temperature profile. And this is far more interesting. So you can see that not only are we affecting the, <laughs> not only are we affecting the gas accretion, but, uh, Migration is also uh, enormously affected. So here, uh, the up there is really fuzzy, so you can't tell. But the um, exponent is going from point or minus point nine to minus point three. So we're uh, this is from lower to higher temperatures. And there's and then uh, on the right here, this is the same idea as above, but with the mass of the planet is the sum of the co core and the envelope. It's a nice smooth animation of uh, decreasing size. Okay. But perhaps the most interesting uh, parameter that affects gas accretion is the opacity. Uh, so these are the same, same plots, same axes, but with opacity varying from 10 to the minus 3 to 1, or well, in, and higher. So this is very clearly, uh, with lower opacity, you get uh, much larger planets. And then also this is affecting the migration, although we were mostly investigating gas accretion. And then we'll let this run one more time. Or you can. And then to even more clearly illustrate the effect this has on the gas accretion, we've got the the plot of mass versus time. So you can see that with um, low opacity, you get exponentially higher amounts of uh, gas accreting onto the core. So then we took this and applied it to a uh, population synthesis. So uh, these, <laughs> the uh, images in this animation may be slightly out of order, but I promise that they're generally from low opacity to uh, high opacity. 
There, you'll see one where that's, it's a little out of order. So there they go down and then ignore those last few. Those aren't. <laughs> those didn't happen. Um, <laughs> uh, so we're getting lots more giant planets with low opacity compared to high opacity. And then, again, for what it's worth, we've thrown up some p-values here from the, uh, the tests. Um, ours were so low that they just decided they were zero. Um, but here's the, um, we've got a best case here. And I think it's, it's this one, the 0 .005 opacity, which uh, has a plot over there of that one. And, oh, it's added automatic. Oh, you have the eyes. <laughs> And so here, here's just a, a few things we learned and some conclusions about planet or uh, how gas accretion affects planet formation. So uh, first of all, gas accretion can significantly affect how a planet forms and migrates. As you can see, uh, every planet parameter we changed affected how far in the planets were migrating. Uh, both visual and statistical comparisons of our models with the observed planet population show they do not come from the same distribution. And uh, so. Uh, we, we'd like to do some more population synthesis syntheses, but uh, and with varying those other properties that we looked at earlier, like temperature profile and uh, viscosity, but uh, some time constraints meant that we could only do opacity, which I think is the most important factor here. And of course, we learned a lot from this project and would like to thank the organizers for an excellent week. And then we have actually <laughs> we. We threw this one at the end because what we were trying to do was uh, make up for differences in opacities with increased disk lifetime. So we were thinking that if you uh, increase the opacity but then gave the disk a proportionately larger uh, amount of time to form the planets that we could generate a similar population. But uh, as you can see, when we increase the disk lifetime uh, we actually increased it by 10 to the 5 fourths, which uh, was based on those equations we threw up at the beginning. Um, you do form an awful lot more giant planets, but also the increased lifetime causes all of the planets to migrate inward. So you get this massive desert in the middle. Uh, you have, so you have the sm planets that are able to get big, uh, grow and stay there, and then you have the planets that aren't able to grow to that size. Type 1 migration just drives them straight into the star. And then this was... Um, the same, except we decrease the disk lifetime to see if that would also reflect, like, um, you don't have the migration you expect. Hmm? You don't have the migration. Yeah, I mean, you don't have the, the migration, but, uh, and this was just to see, you know, going in the opposite direction. Um, is there anything else that you want to say? Okay, I think that's it. <laughs> Value realistic? Uh, the question is, is our favorite opacity value realistic? Um, well, it's not the nominal one, but uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I know enough to answer that question about opacities. Do you? Um, I would say that it's not. Um, that we're at over double what the nominal capacity is but I'm not familiar enough with DISC, honestly, to be able to confirm nor deny that. So. <laughs> yes, so what Christoph was saying is that he actually wrote a paper that found that the um, dust grain opacity was five or three times 10 to the negative three. So very close to the value that we actually found was the best fit, so. Random occurrence. Yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Any other questions? All right. Okay. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>